So today, what I want to spend a lot of time on is a bunch of the kind of nuggets and things that might not be in the script necessarily that'll kind of help you transition into selling more cookware um, on your appointments, um, at your events. Um, but basically, before you use that script, just remember to memorize it, internalize it, and then you can personalize it. That's the big thing about that script. So today, what we're going to talk about, though, we're going to talk about names and uses. Um, you've got them for knives, but do you have them for cookware? Um, this is something that I didn't really know up until like three years ago about cookware at all, about like half the tools and what you're supposed to use them for. So I think those are super valuable. We're going to talk about improving your display, also your PowerPoints for your virtuals, and then um, teaching customers how to use our cookware. That's probably the most, that's what we're going to spend the most of the time on today. And lastly, we're going to show, talk about showing sets, how to properly position them, closing and dropping down. So remember, before we jump in today, guys, just because a customer has pans does not mean that they will not buy pans from you. So how'd you sell your Cutco knife set to them? They already had knives. Oh, they've already got pans, Bert. So they already had knives before they bought their Cutco knives, right? It's all in your head, right? So let's jump in today. Names and uses and pitch and sets. So before you guys pitch a set, how do you introduce your sets? Do you call them by what they're called on the price list? Or do you call them by like a relatable nickname? Like, um, we do with our knife sets. So for example, um, we don't have technically a name for it in our price list, right? Which is everything that we make, but we call it the legacy set, right? Or the complete set, not the ultimate set, right? Or a signature set. It's just the legacy set. Okay. Um, again, this is the type of set that again is going to allow them to, again, just pass down everything they already own, get rid of everything and replace everything they've got in their, in their drawers. The accomplished set, I call it the family set right? It gets you all the workhorses in the set, gets you everyday pieces and a couple accessories um, for occasional jobs. The dedicated set we call is the starter set. Okay. The starter set gets you everyday pieces. Most pans are going to be dirty every single day, but at the same time, you're also going to get a couple of the family size pieces as well. Right. And the aspiring set, I don't talk about it much, but I call it the college kid set or the try it out set, right? For people that just want a sample, see what they're all about. Okay. Now how to, how to, pop, how to properly position sets to customers. Okay. When you're first explaining sets, you got to keep it simple and generic, right? You're going to start with an overview of everything, but the customer may ask you more questions as you go through it. And that's when you can go more into detail with some names and uses, which we'll get to in a second. Just like we have names and uses for the knives. Eventually it's important that you know all of these so you can properly educate a customer on how to use everything in the set, right? So with our complete set, this is how I explain it guys it takes 15 seconds. You get three fry pans, you get three saucepans, a big and a small skillet, a Dutch oven, a wok, stock pot, griddle, and a couple accessory items, your double boiler and our steamer unit. I think that took me 16 seconds. I apologize. That's it, right? It's simple. It's not gourmet. It's not overcomplicated. When you sell an ultimate set, are you guys sitting there saying, so you get two pairing knives, you get three bread knives, you get 17 chef knives, you get a clean, like you don't do that with the complete set. People don't buy the complete set. 99% of people don't buy it because of all the tools. They get it because of the idea. The legacy set guys is the exact same thing, okay? Now, just look at the ultimate again. You don't need to describe every single knife or every single tool, but eventually, again, a person might ask more questions, but really quick with the other sets that are smaller, this is how you can explain these as well. So I always pitch the complete set first, right? Make them excited about that. But if you need to talk about the accomplished set, for example, this is how I explain this. You could go home today and get rid of the majority of the pans in your cupboards and drawers in downsize. You just don't get the big three. And you can always add those later. All right, the dedicated set. With this set, I got this from Jason Jeffrey four years ago when I coached them. Like Vernon just said, get a mentor. With this set, it gets you everything you really need. Right, you get a big and a small fry pan, you get a big and a small saucepan, you get a big one for your soups and chilies, and you still get a large skillet. Simple. Right? Does that sound complicated? They're getting, technically speaking, eight tools with lids. That's not complicated though. Right? So sometimes again, a customer is gonna want more details, and that's what we're gonna give you today. Thanks. Big shout out to my guy, Josh Muller. Um, he did an amazing audio on this. I think it was like three and a half, four years ago. And I scripted out the whole dang thing. So um, we're going to fly through this because we got about a bunch of other nuggets we're going to talk about today. So um, eight and a half inch fry pan, guys. Eggs and omelets, simple stuff. Or super small amount of sauteing of vegetables. 10 inch fry pan, 
sauteing peppers, onions, a bigger omelet. I make a three egg omelet almost every single morning. 10 inches the way to go. 12 inch fry pan, bigger meals, right? Six plus eggs, right? I'm pretty sure when I was at Josh's house a couple, uh, I think it was last year, I think we managed to fit 12 eggs into the fry pan and it worked, which is unbelievable. Okay, but it's also good for fish. It's also good for bacon, right? Next one, griddle. Great for two big pancakes, right? Or up to four grilled cheeses, right? It's also good for French toast. I literally, right before this conference started today, made two grilled cheese and they were delicious and I didn't burn anything. Mm, delicious. Okay, one quart, small fruits and vegetables. Like if you're doing carrots or broccoli or just warming up canned soup. Simple stuff, two quart, medium size. If you're cooking for two people, quinoa, rice, pasta for one or two people. The three quart, great for boiling water for bigger pastas, mac and cheese, mashed potatoes, things like that. Simple, not complicated. Nine inch utility pan. I just call this the mini skillet. All right, if you're making chicken and vegetables for two people, it's the perfect size, right? It's a really, really easy pan. If you're not making a big, large, huge, gigantic meal or you're not food prepping, the, the mini skillet's fantastic. The 11 inch skillet, 11 and a half inch skillet, your burgers, steaks, bigger meals for four people. You can cook up to four to five chicken breasts at a time. I've done eight, cut up, took a while, <laughs> but I did eight one time in skillet. Okay, now the ones that some people don't really know how to use them. The Dutch oven, okay, the Dutch oven, you can roast a chicken, you can fill it up with all the fixings, all the vegetables, add your stock, your water juices in there. It's also great for corn on the cob as well. When you put the high dome baking cover onto the Dutch oven, guys, that creates a true Dutch oven right? It creates the same environment as an oven. So what's great about it is you can do a whole chicken with all the fixings on medium to low heat in about two hours, especially in the summertime, but you don't have to heat up the, like the oven to 400 degrees and heat the entire house in the process, right? especially in the middle of the summer. The wok, okay? It's got the flat bottom. Everybody that has had a booth that's ever had a wok, they always pick up the wok and they look underneath it. They're like, does it have a flat bottom? It's got a flat bottom, right? So you don't need to stand for the wok. You can make sure everything's evenly cooked as well, right? You can get a nice sear on things in the wok. It's good for stir fries, paellas. It's like a skillet on steroids. Shout out to Kelly Kinzer for that line. It's also good for homemade fudge if you want it to be really, really thin. It's also great for Rice Krispie treats. It's big enough, right? It's a big, heated, gigantic 13-inch flying saucer. It's beautiful. The 10 quart, really good for big boils, chilies, big sauces, seafood boils, anything for entertaining, especially soups and chilies. So big stuff. Okay. Double boiler. Have you guys ever been to a buffet at a Cutco conference? Some of you, I know I've never been to an in-person Cutco conference, but if you've ever been to a buffet ever, they've got the little lighted things underneath these big, huge things of like mac and cheese. That's what a double boiler essentially is, right? So it's great for, again, doing fondues, melting chocolates, quesos. All you do is boil the water, put the food in on top of the double boiler and it melts and doesn't stick. Okay. And then the steamer unit, it's great for boiling water, for steaming up Brussels sprouts, broccoli, bao buns, right? For my, um, uh, it's also really nice too, when you're cutting or when you're doing things, if you just want to do quicker, that's, what's nice about it. Okay. So that's names and uses. I flew through that because we got a lot of other stuff to talk about, but once you have some names and uses for some basic stuff, it's not gourmet, by the way. Also, if you buy a piece of cookware in the cookware that you receive, you will get a cookware guide. Surprise, surprise. It has things that you can use each piece for in the back. So if you missed any of that, you can look at that. It's fantastic. Okay. Second thing we're going to talk about is just the power of having more cookware to show or presenting cookware in general. Okay. Are you struggling to sell cookware? Okay. The first question I ask is how much are you actually showing it and how much are you actually talking about it? Right. Pretty simple. And lastly, how much of it do you actually have to show to customers? Do you have a one quart saucepan like I had for the first six years of my Cutco life? Or do you actually have a full set to show people? Right? If you feel like you're selling pieces, you might just not have enough cookware to create interest in sets. It's pretty simple. Right? Just like if you had a trimmer and a batik carver and a chef knife, people would probably buy a lot of individual knives from you. Right? But when you show them a full set, people are like, oh, that's a cool thing. I like the idea of having a set. It's the same thing with cookware. Okay? Remember that cookware is very similar to our knives, guys. If you have more to show, you will probably sell more cookware. Okay? I remember when I was coaching with Jason four years ago. I was complaining about how I was selling a lot of aspiring sets and a lot of pieces. And he's like, well, do you have everything in the dedicated cookware set? And I was like, I don't. He's like, uh-huh. You should probably get everything in the dedicated cookware set. And surprise, surprise, I invested in everything else in the dedicated cookware set that I was missing. 
And voila, I started selling more dedicated cookware sets. And the same followed when I invested in the accomplished pieces and the legacy pieces as well, okay? If you do not have the samples yet, get them and use them at home, okay? Vector Connect, this is how you find it. Go to non-Rolo customer or non-customer orders under Rolo. Buy Cutco samples. The first one you get is the seven, 78 bucks. You get the one quart saucepan with all the cookware materials, okay? Comparison materials, price list, all that jazz. It's 78 bucks, do it. It's guaranteed forever. The pan's like $279 if you were to buy it retail. It's a steal. Okay. Next thing, once you're over 10K in sales, which I think the majority of the people on this are, you can buy the tent, you can buy the skillet and the fry pan. Use them at home a bunch. A bunch. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. Once you have those, then you can buy the Cutco Events display kits for those of you that are doing events, or you just want them for your house. I don't care. It doesn't matter what you do. The boot display aspiring kit, guys, you can get for $399. Guaranteed forever, by the way. And then the walk the stock pot and the griddle you can get for $4.59, which was not an option when I bought the walk stock pot and the griddle. <laughs> so it is amazing. It's much lower barrier to entry to get the big pieces in the set. Okay, this is what I'll say. The big three about the walk the stock pot and the griddle, they are statement makers. If you have a budget for improving your guys' booth displays for events specifically, I would put cookware towards the top of the list. It gets people's attention. It's huge. The walk, everybody looks at it and they pick up the lid. It's unbelievable. It's like, it's like, it says, pick me up on the, on the dang lid. It's unbelievable. Pick, people will stop at your booth when there is a walk toward the front of the booth. I promise. Right? So it's also a big CPO booster. Bonus for you guys. Doesn't just make your booth look good. It also adds money to your pocketbook. Okay? In your virtual demos, I'm not the expert in this category at all. But do you have a slide at the beginning of your uh, virtual presentation with cookware on it? Like, do you have a Cutco Kitchen slide? that's got flatware and cookware on it. If you don't, I would challenge you to put that on it, right? Are you waiting till the end of your virtual presentation to let them know anything about the cookware? If you are, put it towards the beginning, okay? Next thing we're gonna talk about is selling cookware by teaching customers how to use it, okay? This is the bulk of the message, guys, and this is what I want you guys to take away from this, and you will start selling more cookware literally immediately, okay? Have you ever, I wish, again, I know this is a different way we Zoom. I wish I could see a bunch of hands right now. However, have you guys ever sold a set of cookware and then they return it without you either knowing or they call you and say, yeah, this sucks. Everything sticks, right? And then they return it and you get a negative $500, negative $1,000 or $2,000 CPO on your commission account the next week. It sucks. It's a crappy feeling, okay? So the first question that I have for you guys is how comfortable are you using our cookware? If I showed up to your house literally right now, right? Just kidding. That's not me at your door. Don't worry. Right? But if I showed up with a 10-inch fry pan, right, and told you that you needed to make me an omelet without it sticking, could you do it with confidence? I promise that if you guys have not, if you're not selling a lot of cookware, I'd probably argue that you probably can't do that. And that's okay. Right? I was there too at one point. Right? The trick to selling more cookware, but simultaneously also reducing your guys' returns, guys, is by teaching the customer throughout the demo, right? So here's how I look at it. I don't sell cookware, right? I make the customer feel confident in using it and then they hand me their credit card. So I'll say that again. I don't sell cookware. I make the, I make the customer confident, feel confident in using it and then they hand me their credit card. So what are some good rules of thumb to mention to the customers multiple times throughout the script? It's easy to use. It's easy to clean. It's built like a tank. It lasts forever. It's easy to use. It's easy to clean. It's built like a tank. It lasts forever. Okay, the three little one-liners that I use multiple times throughout my demo is medium to low is all you need to know. Always preheat the pan unless you're boiling water or steaming vegetables. Always preheat the pan unless you're boiling water or steaming vegetables. Set and don't peak. Medium below is all you need to know. Always preheat the panel as boiling water or steaming veggies. Set and don't peak. Okay. A great one-liner that I use to pique people's interest, especially at the booth or when I'm on a demo, is if they don't know anything about them. I say the great thing about our pans, Mrs. Jones, is they have the same benefit of a non-stick pan without any of the health risk. Our pans have the same benefit of a non-stick pan without the health risk. The easy trick is to just preheat the pan before you spray any butter or put any oil on it. Our pans have the same benefit of a nonstick pan without the health risk. 
always preheat the pan. The reason why you always want to preheat the pan, Mrs. Jones, is it helps disperse heat throughout the pan so they're not hot spots. Then you put your butter or spray on there. Okay. Help your customers understand the differences between our pans and coated pans by using analogies. Right? This is the best analogy I have with cookware, and it will immediately help your customers transition into using our cookware without a hitch at all. The only trick with our cookware, Mrs. Jones, is super easy. Right? You know how you always preheat your oven or the grill before you put a pizza in the oven or a grill on the, uh, put your steaks on the grill? Every single customer will go, uh-huh, yep, I do that every single time. You do the same exact thing with our pots and pans, Mrs. Jones, but you only need to preheat it for about 60 to 90 seconds, not 10 minutes like the oven. That right there, guys, will help your customers understand that it's not complicated. I just got to preheat it just like an oven or a grill. I don't want hot spots on my pans. You got to remember, guys, most customers hate stainless steel because most stainless steel pans, you get hot spots. I can't tell you how many freaking waterless cookware people that already own waterless cookware that I've had to teach on how to make eggs because they were not properly told. They just got to turn the dang pan on for 60 seconds before they put butter in it. It's unbelievable. It's so easy, but people don't get that, right? So the easiest way to teach your customers is by using visual examples, okay? Most, most booths, most places, you're not going to be in a person's home. Sometimes you might not be at the booth where you have literally access to electricity. So the first thing to do is make videos of you using it, okay? The second is to use videos that are already pre-made by CSPs that have done a phenomenal job of making videos that are really easy to share. So the first one I want to recommend is Jason Jeffries, Knife of the Month, type it in. Knife of the Month, video nine. It's called the 3366 rule. Type it in, you'll find it. Okay, it's 13 minutes. Save it to your phone. It's amazing. Josh, my guy, Josh Muller. Frying eggs in waterless cookware. It's seven minutes. The best seven minute video on making eggs in our fry pans that exists on the internet. Okay. So I screen recorded Jason's video and I skipped to the important parts throughout the video. So I don't need to worry about, again, having Wi Fi loading because I just screen recorded it to my phone. Okay. So the next thing is to make videos yourself. So here's what I'm going to do for you I'm going to share my screen really quick with you guys. Okay. All right, can everybody see that? This is gonna kind of look. Josh, can you see this? Yes, okay, cool. So I'm just gonna do my videos really quick, guys. I usually have these on my phone, but these are the videos that I show. So I show a pan, oops, I show a pan that's not properly preheated. So the first video you're gonna make, make a video of a not properly heated pan. The water will sizzle, right? That's not properly heated. So I say, Mrs. Jones, this is a hot pan, but it's not hot enough. Here's what you're looking for. You want the pan, you want the water to do a little jig. Uh, it's doing a jig. Yeah, that means that the water is ready. There's no hot spots. So that means, Mrs. Jones, you can put your butter in there or your spray. I like butter more than I should. And they're like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry if you're hungry, Mrs. Jones. I haven't eaten lunch yet today either. Right? And then I'm like, here's your eggs. So then you're going to make an egg video. Then boil in there. They're doing their thing. They're cooking up. Mm -hmm. Delicious. And then you're going to say, Mrs. Jones, the cool thing about our pans is you can actually use metal utensils because if you're using metal utensils, the thing is, if you scratch it, it's only cosmetic. You're not going to have to worry about anything actually hurting your pans. So then just flip it over. Voila. Oh my gosh, Mrs. Jones. Have you ever seen the egg on there, Mrs. Jones, on TV where they can make an egg float in the pan? You can do the same thing with our pans. Crazy concept. Check this out, Mrs. Jones. We're making eggs and it's going to fall right out of the pan. Voila. And nothing sticks. Holy crap. Okay, so that's it, right? Not complicated at all, but I literally use those six videos. So again, not preheated, then preheated properly. It's dancing, put the butter spray on it. That's the third video. The fourth video, put your eggs in the pan. They're cooking, right, doing their thing. Five, flip it without it sticking. And six, show them sliding out of the pan. Seeing is believing with cookware, guys. If they see it, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. A bonus video to make as well, guys, is to put an omelet or make an, om or make an omelet. If there's anything stuck on the bottom of the pan, like a couple little leftover eggs, bringing it over to the sink and cleaning it out. That's a bonus. Okay. Fourth thing. Last thing we're talking about is closing and dropping down. Okay. I have so much content. I'm just trying to squeeze this into 25 minutes. That's why I'm talking really fast. So this is the fun part. 
honestly, after you've used the script that I'm going to, again, that Dave and Loretta are going to send out to you guys and you've showed them the videos, you've built up their confidence in using it. The close is honestly the easiest part of selling cookware. Okay. The biggest tip I had with closing cookware or closing more cookware is starting is something that I started doing about four years ago, which is building kitchen tools into the package pricing. So this gives you some wiggle room on the price. At the end of the day, guys, we can't B block cookware like we can with knife sets. So adding kitchen tools gives you that $300, technically $299 buffer. Okay. Now the best thing that I've found that is the best tie down, this doesn't just go for cookware. This is just a closing tip in general, but this is something that I do with all of my customers when I'm actually trying to get them a deal and see if they're actually going to buy something from me is that after you've asked confirmation questions and you do a good, it's, it's called a tie down to like actually like level or figure out their interest in actually saying like, here's my credit card. Okay. So ask some confirmation questions. So if this is the set that you'd want, Mrs. Jones, yes, this is the set that I want. Make sure that it's something that could fit in the budget if they really wanted it. So what I say is, okay, cool, Mrs. Jones. Well, if I could do something a little extra special to earn your business today, would you be open to going for it? All right. So if I could do something a little extra special to earn your business today, would you be open to going for it? The customer will say, well, you maybe, right? Now to really figure out if they're actually interested and if you're actually on the right set and the right price point, I say this, okay, cool. Just so I know if the deal was good enough, would you be open to just trying them out? Okay, cool. So just so I know, if the deal was good enough, would you open to just trying it out? Okay, if the customer says yes, give them a deal they can't refuse. Don't have to be insane, right? But take a hundred bucks off the set if you need to, or just throw them some, like a cheese knife and a shears in. If they don't have cutco, if they've already got cutco, throw them, show them a knife they haven't had before. The salmon knife is amazing for this as well. And throw it in for free, right? Get their business. If they say no, you're probably on the wrong set. It's just too much money or it's too many pieces, right? And then you can say, okay, well, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to, again, spend more than you're comfortable with. Or it doesn't make sense to get a set that, again, would get you tools that you wouldn't use. So if you're new, just for my practice, can I show you an option that might be better for your budget, but still get you the majority of the pieces you want? Or if you're not new, it'd be like, let me do, let me do this for you, Mrs. Jones. Let me show you an option that I think would be a lot better for your budget, but also get, still get you the majority of the pieces you're excited about. And then you drop down. Okay. Now I've got a minute and 40 seconds. So I have some bonus tips here, guys, that I did not think I was going to get to, but I'm going to try to fly through these. So this is um, the difference between all clad and Cutco. Okay. Who here? I oh, got, you don't do the hand. I can't do the hand thing, but a lot of people I'm assuming have run into a customer that has all clad. And you're like, what the heck is the difference? Okay. There's a couple big differences. Okay. Real quick. All clad use rivets. We do not use rivets, right? Um, which means when all clad is on the stovetop, the handle gets hot. If you've ever watched a cooking show, they've always got a towel on their shoulder. That's because they have to use the towel to pick up the pan because the pan gets hot. We use spot welding, which is actually more expensive than riveting the pans, right? But it does not get hot on the stovetop. Okay. Next thing, all clad uses 1810 stainless in their, um, pan itself, which is technically porous. Okay. It is an 1810 stainless is a porous metal, technically very microscopic, but it is porous. So if you were to put liquid bacteria into an all clad pan, technically it could survive. If you did the same thing to a cutco pan, it would not. And the reason why is cutco uses a surgical stainless steel, right? So what that means, it is perfect. If you ever scratch our pans, you will never get things that stick because stainless steel is perfect in that way. You will eventually long-term with all clad. All clad is also great. It's great stuff. Okay. Next thing is they, the biggest thing is they don't have waterless cookware, right? They don't have waterless. So when they put the, the lid on again, they don't create that same vapor seal that Cutco does. So they don't get the benefits of waterless cookware. Okay. The one thing I would say about specifically with all clad owners or people that are thinking about all clad is they're just like Gustav and Shun owners. Make sure that you honor them because they've done their research. Technically, if they already own all clad, they have bought the best stuff that they can buy in stores, right? So honor their decision in their purchase. So when you're selling to an all clad owner, it's like, if you like your all clad, like Cutco pans are like all clad on steroids. If you love your all clad, you will love your Cutco cookware. And that's all I've got. So time, I think that's 25 minutes on the dot. Cookware nuggets. Hope you guys sell more cookware. Again, it's an amazing product. Start using it at home. Nikki, back to you.